in 1 John 5, 7, the King James Bible speaks of there are three who bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, or in the King James, the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. In 1516, uh, Desiderius Erasmus, uh, a Dutch humanist uh, scholar, published the first printed Greek New Testament on March 1st, 1516. And when it came out, he did not have this verse, uh, 1 John 5, 7, in there with the wording of affirming the Trinity. Uh, there were Catholic scholars who got very upset at him for not putting that in there. And in his second edition of 1519, he didn't have it. What he mentioned in his notes in that second edition is, I didn't put it in because I did not see it in any Greek manuscripts. And by 1520, there was a scribe at Oxford uh, named Roy who created a manuscript that had the entire New Testament in it, and somehow it ended up at the doorstep of uh, Erasmus in Basel, and uh, so Erasmus didn't promise that he would put the, that verse in if he found it in manuscript. He did the negative saying, I didn't put it in because I didn't see any Greek manuscripts that had it. So he s finds this manuscript that has it that was made to order, actually. <laughs> and so his third edition of 1522 now has 1 John 5, 7 with that Trinitarian formula. That is something that has plagued English readers of the Bible, but not German readers, because Martin Luther based his New Testament on the 1519 edition that didn't have that. So in uh, 1519, Luther was using that edition, and it didn't have the Trinitarian formula. German Christianity has never had a problem that the Bible never had that Trinitarian formula in it. But it made it into Erasmus's 1522 text, and then in the King James Bible after that, and Erasmus basically puts it in under protest. To date, we have discovered eight manuscripts that have that wording there in four manuscripts written from the 16th or later century and in four margins of manuscripts, the earliest of which I think is 10th or 12th century, but the marginal notes themselves are probably 16th or later. And so it seems that this particular reading was never part of the Greek New Testament until after there was a protest uh, of Erasmus. It, it was found in in uh, an, uh, one of the editions of the uh, Latin Vulgate, and Erasmus uh, or somebody else came along that and said, well, it must be that. And what's really fascinating is the guy who puts this into the text, uh, the scribe named Roy, uh, didn't know Greek very well, so he simply translated Latin into Greek without knowing how Greek syntax worked. And so he made mistakes that Erasmus corrected when he put it into his text, and therefore Erasmus corrected the Greek and still put in something in his Greek text that he could not find in the manuscript because the, he, he knew it was a, a fabrication. You know? <laughs> so he didn't quite follow his own word on that. But here's the point. We've known this for 500 years. This is bogus. And uh, Ehrman comes along and he says, without this verse, there is no explicit Trinitarian formula in the New Testament. So how could that possibly be taught in the New Testament? And I would say, gee, it never affected Christians through any of the church councils. They never pointed out that verse because it did not exist in the Bible. So they came up with the doctrine of the Trinity on some other basis. And that basis, I think, is that they studied the scriptures and they, they saw that what you have in the New Testament are the ingredients for the Trinity, maybe not explicitly laid out in any one given place, but all those ingredients are put together in such a way that the only way you can use them is in terms of Trinitarian articulation. This is what Alistair McGrath in his Genesis of Doctrine talks about, that uh, when we are trying to figure out what the theology of the New Testament is, we've got all the pieces there. We don't have to invent new revelation. We start with that revelation, but how we put that together in meaningful formulas has to make sense, it has to be coherent, it has to take into account all of the parts. And it has to be the simplest Occam's razor kind of a, a viewpoint. And that's the Trinity. The church by A.D. 381 had already strongly affirmed the Trinity as what the nature of the Godhead is. And Ehrman says, well, they didn't have the explicit Trinity, so it must not be true. Well, that, that's just plain cheap with church history. It's, and, and he put that into misquoting Jesus, I think, to alarm people rather than to say, but everybody's known this for 500 years. And so it, 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 the Trinity is there. It may not be explicit in that one verse, but it's still taught in the New Testament. That's the kind of thing he does. Uh -huh.